Hello guys, what's happening? It's your boy Adola Graphics. Thank you so much for coming back. If you are out here, and if you are new here, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so as to be notified when I drop a new video. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to design a cheese brother packet like this. Without further ado, let's get started. Alright. Alright, this is my core draw. I'm using the updated version. So what next I'm gonna do now is to create a new page. I'm gonna do that by going over to this place where I have my plus over here. I'll simply go ahead and take it like this and have it like this. So the piece size I'm gonna be using for this design is going to be A4 size. So I'll simply change it from this side to A4 size like this. So I'll change it to landscape like this. So like I said, like I normally say, this code doesn't allow me to use the future of the click on my rectangle tool to fit into this my project over here like this. So I'm gonna simply draw a rectangle like this, then copy the page dimension from the property bar over here like this, control C on my keyboard, then select this one, then you paste it over here like this, control V. Do the same thing to the other side and copy it like this, control C, then select this, then control V to paste it like this. Hit P on your keyboard to fit into to your project like that. So head over to your property bar, click on this drop down arrow, select none to get rid of the outline. So I'm gonna simply drag this one and bring it to this side. Then right click at the same time to duplicate it like that. So I'm gonna fill this one over here with this ruby red that I have over here with my color palette. Yeah, and have it that way. So I'm gonna open it up a little bit like this. I think this is okay. Let me close it a bit. Yeah, and I think this is fine. So what next I'm gonna do now is to bring in the sources I'm gonna be using for this tutorial. I have them over here in my page three. I'll simply highlight them over with the text, control C on my keyboard, then come over to this place where you have your project, control V to paste them like that. Then bring it to the side. Now you can simply scale them down like this. Bring it to the side. Now the first thing I'm gonna do now is to bring in this one. I'm Change the angle of rotation to 90 in your property bar where you have your angle of rotation over here like this. I just go ahead and type in 90 in my keyboard and hit enter and I have it rotated that way. So I will scale it up like this, then bring it to this side. Head over to your menu bar where you have your effects, scroll all the way down to where you have your adjustment, then this chart over here like this. Now I have it this way. I'll, sim I'll simply right click on it, then select power clip or better still, I'll right click and drag it to this my project that i feel with that will be red and, and release it like this so my it will pump up with this option like this to power clip it inside here like the, inside your project so i'll simply i'll simply select the power clip option like this and have it right inside my project so I'll, it's either it's either a double click on my and my project like this to open it up or better still I'll come over to this place where it says edit so i'll just go ahead and open it, open it up like that so i'll position it over here so what next I'm going to do now is to come over to this place where it says finish and push it up like this. So I'm going to hold down alt on my keyboard to make a selection of your power clip bag and inside your project like this. So I'll change the blending mode from the normal to overlay. To do that, I'll simply head over to my tools bar over here, make a selection of your transparency tool. Then go back to your blending option that is in your property bar, change it to overlay like this. So I'm going to reduce the opacity to about 50, sorry, or 70 like this so i'm gonna blow it like this so head over to your menu bar where you have the effects come up to this place that says blow then go and blow so I'll bring it to this side like this i'll simply click ok on this side where it says ok so what next i'm going to do now is to create a new right angle so i'm gonna do that by going over to this place then draw it this way then get rid of the outline in this property bar this then i'm simply gonna fit this one with yellow color over here like this so i'm gonna head over to my tools where we have my shape to over here like this make a selection of it then convert it to curve control key on your keyboard to convert it to curve then just bring this one like this to the side yeah let me check yeah bring it on to this side just take your time and do it properly then right click on it and select power clip over here like this and it is right inside your project so i hold on or to make a selection of it hold on auto my keyboard to make a selection of it in, that is your power clip a tangle like this then break it to this side let's take your time and do it the way you want it 
So I uh, simply did bring in these matches over here, then position, scale it up like this, position over here like this. Scale it up like this. Yeah. So let me scale it down a bit. In case when I use the same thing that I use, I'll, I'll drop a link in the description to download the resources that I use in this tutorial. So I'll right click on these chips, then select power clip over here like this, then power clip it inside my project and it is right inside it like that. So what that's not gonna do now is drop a shadow beneath these chips. So I'm gonna simply do that by going back to my tools bar, select draw ellipse tool, then draw in arrow one like this over here like this. So I'm gonna fill it with black. Get the outline in my T bar. So let's take my name and do it properly. So I'm going to bitmap it, or better still, since I'm using the updated version of Corel Draw, I'll simply go to my effect, blur, the Angosian blur. I'm going to increase it like this. Yeah, and I'll be this way. I'll simply click it like this. So I'll scale it up a bit, then select my transparency tool, my choose bar, then reduce the opacity a little bit. Like this. And I'll be that way. So when I'm I'll right click on it again, then select power clip over here like this. And it's right inside my project. So I'm gonna double click on my project like this to open it up, then select the chips, then control pitch up like this. Like to bring it to the top of your page like that to so over to put it under, underneath the shadow that I applied. So what next I'm gonna do now is to create a new another rectangle over here like this. Over here like this. When I'm gonna put in the chip stuff over here. So I'll simply change the color to this my yellow carry the dash line your property bar. So I'm gonna convert this my rectangle to curve so I'm simply gonna select my shape to my tools bar over here so I'll control Q on my keyboard to convert it to curve now select this side of the rectangle con head over to your property bar where come to this place where it says convert to curve I'll convert it to curve do the same thing to this side select this side convert it to curve then select this side of the node hit delete on your keyboard to get rid of it do the same thing to the other side like this convert to curve this side convert to curve then select this side of the node, get rid of it like this, and I will have So I'm simply gonna adjust it to the, my, to the way I want it. Yeah. Like this. And like this. Like this. Yeah. So I'm gonna apply. I'm gonna apply um, a contour to it. I'm gonna head over to my tools bar, grab my envelope to I'll just click on this drop down arrow beneath it to, to give me these options like this so I'm gonna simply select this contour over here then I'm gonna give it two over here then inside like that so if I move it this way now you can see everything just moving together with the contour that I applied to make it apart control key on your keyboard to break it apart then ungroup it in this side ungroup all then I'm gonna select this one then give it to be red. Select this one and change it to yellow also. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna scale it up a bit. Sorry. I'm gonna scale it up a bit like this. So I'll bring in the test I'm gonna be using over here. Control key on my keyboard to break it apart. Then I'll bring in this original over here like this. Over here, I'll have it like this. Then I'll double click on it to give it test, test two. Then control on your keyboard to select it, or then shift three on your keyboard to change the case to title case like this. Then I'll change the font to Montserrat. Montserrat over here like this. Then change the color to white. Yeah. So you change the color to orange. Um. So yellow. Like this, then I'm gonna select my planting chip, bring it to the side, control pitch up on your keyboard to so bring it to the top of your pit like that. So I'm gonna double click on this side, hit enter, then control E, then shift F3 on my keyboard 
to change the case to title kit also no upper grade this time like this i are you are you getting it so uh, yeah all right so i'm gonna press ctrl key on my keyboard like this to break it up to break it apart or better still, let me just change the font to this font bahams heavy like this so i'm gonna head over to my property bar change the alignment to center like this then I'll open it up like this like this then position it do i want it so this is within space over here the spacing sorry then now okay let me check okay so i'll change the color to ruby red then give it a yellow outline so i'm gonna increase the outline over here the click on the side of your outline pen tool then give it about four then scale it with object behind view like that so i'm gonna scale it up again so i'm gonna give it that sort of shape like as to make it look as if it's coming out from something so i'm gonna simply go to my tooth bar we have my envelope i'll just go ahead and select the envelope then drag it up like this like this then select this side and do the same thing like this now bring this sound like this a bit up like this then do the same thing to this one and apply it to this one also sorry yeah so i'm gonna kind of feel this one is a little bit bigger so i'm gonna create scale it down a bit then place this one over here like this so i'm gonna copy this make a i'm gonna duplicate this one so i'm gonna simply copy this plantain cheese ctrl c on my keyboard then convert this one to black and i'm gonna change the outline to black also so i'm gonna paste one that i copied earlier then drag it to this side just, just take your time and do it properly to give it that sort of 3d stuff like that and have it this way so i'm gonna highlight it then Ctrl G on my keyboard, select your project, and hit C on your keyboard to centralize it that way. So I'm gonna bring this one over here like this. Ready now, plantain chips. So this one that I have over here, I'm gonna simply play around it, around it to my project like this. I'm gonna scale this one a bit down, a bit like this. So just take your time and do it the way you want it. I'm gonna play this one over here. Then place it inside. Right click on it, then select power clip over here like this, and power clip your side. So I'm just gonna play around with it like that. Yeah, I think it's okay like this. Yeah, so what next I'm gonna do now is make a selection of my star, my tooth bar, then draw red like this. Oh, sorry. Draw it like this. Then convert to this place and type in 790. Then this place to type in 10. Like this. So I'm gonna change the color to ruby red. Like this. Then get rid of the outline in my property bar. Like that. So I'll scale it down like this, bring it to this side, then push it over here like this. Let's take it down and do it properly. So I'm gonna give it a gradient. I press G on my keyboard to you to select the gradient over here in my toolbar. So I'm gonna drag it this way, then head over to my property bar where I have my little fountain field too. Let's go fountain field over here like this. Let's go ahead and apply it out with bring it to the middle like this. Then drag it, scale it up a bit. Then select this mid one that has white on it. Then I'm gonna select this color. Then change it to like this. I hope you are getting it. Yeah. So I'm gonna simply bring it the test that I have over here. Then Control Pitch up on my keyboard. Then double click on this side. Select Control E. Then Shift F3 on my keyboard to change the case to title case. So I'm gonna change E to gonna change it to small a 
then select this side enter this side enter so kind of select select all and bring this inside then change the alignment to center like this then close it close up the space like this so i'm gonna change the font to this perhaps heavy bring it to the size and see on your keyboard to centralize it then scale it up a bit like this then change the color to yellow so yeah now change the color to white yellow is not too bad too anyone that you want to use can just go ahead and use it yeah so what next i'm gonna do now is to bring in this extraordinary do the extraordinary stuff over here control l on the keyboard to wear them then double click on it to control a to select it all then shift f3 to change the case to title case then i'm gonna change the alignment to center over here my property bar and center like this then i also also change the, the font name let me so I remember the font name. Let me see briefly. Okay, the WC WC manuals. I'll just copy from this side. WC Control C Control C on my keyboard. Then come over to this place. Then Control V to paste it. WC manual. Yeah, I have it over here like this. Then control K to break it again. Then scale it up a bit. Then select both of them. Hit C on your keyboard to centralize it. Then change the color to white. Right? Yeah. Then I'll highlight it like this. Then bring it to this side. Then scale it up like this. Yeah. So what next I'm gonna do now? We're almost done. Almost there. So the next thing we're gonna do now is to apply a gradient to the back page. So I'm gonna do that by selecting this one that I have over here like this. Then press G on my keyboard to give you the gradient to or better still. You can come over to this place where you have your interactive feature in your tools over here like this. Let's go ahead and select it that way. Then give it a gradient like this. So I'm gonna give it a this will be ready this side where I have the darker part I'm gonna change it to the lighter will be red so I'm gonna do that by selecting it let me check this one okay yeah I'm gonna select this side of the ruby red then bring it to this side like this to give that bright stuff right like that yeah so I'm gonna make a selection of all of this then, sorry, then bring it to the side and scale it up like this. Scale it down, sorry, over here like this. Do the same thing to the side and position it over here like this. Yeah, so I'm gonna draw a rectangle over here, a very narrow one like this. The reason for this, the reason I'm creating this side is because, in case you have any information that you wanna put there, you can just go ahead and put your information over there like that. So I'm gonna bring in this side of the test, then position it over here, then select it like this, then bring it to this side again. Yeah, bring this one over here, over here again. Yeah, all right. This is how I was able to achieve this design. I hope you like this video. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and please and play this. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if if you have not. And turn on the notification bell so that's when I find when I drop a new video. See you next time.